NBC Sports. Brings you the first game of the 1968 World Series. Troy Tigers versus the St. Louis Cardinals. Brought to you by Gillette, makers of new foamy lemon lime shave cream and the new Techmatic adjustable razor. By the more than 1,350 branches in Canada of the Imperial Bank of Commerce and by Chrysler Canada Limited and the Dodge, Plymouth, Roots, and Simca dealers who sell the quality engineered cars and trucks by Chrysler. St. Louis and the aerial shot of Bush Memorial Stadium. One of the beautiful new ballparks of baseball now in its third year of operation. And the famous Gateway Arch, symbolic of St. Louis as the gateway to the west. And a capacity crowd on hand on a hot, muggy afternoon. Hi, everybody. I'm Kurt Gowdy of NBC Sports. This is Harry Carey, the voice of the St. Louis Cardinals, down on the field and in the stands, roaming around to report to you will be Tony Kubek, also of NBC. And yes, it is Bob, uh, Bob Gibson against Denny McLean, and also Mickey Stanley, a center fielder, is going to play shortstop today for the Tigers. These are the two big stories as we open the World Series. Of course, the Cardinals have been made the favorite. On their all-around balance and speed, they have stolen four times as many bases as the Tigers, but the Tigers have hit twice as many home runs. So it would appear to be speed, balance of the Cardinals against the power of the Tigers, but sports has a precedent sometimes of not coming out the way it was supposed to. And here for 24 years as the outstanding broadcaster of the St. Louis Cardinals has been Harry Carey. And Harry, how does it look to you? Thank you very much, Kurt. Hello again, everybody. It looks to me as if it's going to be a great series. And uh, in the National League, Kurt, about Bob Gibson, managers of other teams always say, you better get him in the first couple of innings because if you don't, you never get him. In other words, he, uh, he has a little trouble finding his stride in the first or second inning. If he is sharp from the beginning, hey, he's going to be a tough guy to beat. Kurt, another thing about this particular first game, in addition to the ballyhoo about McLean and Gibson, two great pitchers, is the fact that the leadoff men of each of these ball clubs, McCullough for the Tigers and Brock for the Cardinals, are so instrumental to the offense of their team. I don't think I've ever seen two ball clubs where the leadoff man is so important to their attack. Well, I imagine the entire Scott report of the Red Sox last year was keep Brock off the bases. They didn't do it. And uh, the Tigers feel the same way. They have to stop Brock today. And McCullough led the American League in run scored. You're right. There'll be two key figures. But right now, Harry, Let's go around this uh, beautiful ballpark and, and have you explain to the fans across the country the dimensions and what makes things go here. Fine, Kurt. It's a beautiful ballpark, as you have mentioned. There are about four tiers, and uh, it's 330 feet down each line, symmetrically perfect, 414 feet to the center field wall, 386 feet to each power alley, which means left center and right center. It's a ballpark in which the, uh, while the dimensions aren't too big, the ball somehow never seems to carry too much. And yet the Detroit Tigers just threw that in their workout here yesterday, as well as during batting practice today. And uh, it all comes down to the same thing, that uh, if you hit the ball, you hit it. And there's Bob Gibson to your, the right of your screen, Denny McLean to the left, as each man is getting ready for the most important assignment, I suppose, of his career. They're both fastball pitchers. I know that Kurt will elaborate uh, on that more as we go along. Uh, McLean may have a wider assortment, but each thinks that his bread and butter pitch is his fastball. Gibson 
a very rhythmic athlete. Everything he does, he does well. He's very effortless. Uh, grace and rhythm and everything he does, whether it be fielding or hitting. This crowd in great anticipation here this afternoon, as Kurt mentioned to you, a capacity. Standing room only was sold today. For game one, now the lineup. The Let's listen to them. World Series. First, Detroit Tigers. Here's the manager of the Tigers, Mayo Smith. Batting first and playing second base, number three, Dick McCullough. Batting second and playing shortstop, number 24, Mickey Stanley. Batting third and playing right field, Number six, Al Kaline. Batting fourth and playing first base, number 25, Norm Cash. Batting fifth and playing left field, number 23, Willie Horton. Batting sixth and playing center field, number five, Jim Northrup. Batting seventh and catching, number 11, Bill Freehand. Batting eighth and playing third base, number eight, Don Wirt. Batting ninth and pitching, number 17, Denny McLean, who was warming up at the bullpen. These are the remaining players on the Tiger squad and the coaches now coming out. And if you're going to keep score here again, the batting order of the Tigers, McCullough's at second leading off, Stanley's at shortstop, K-Line will be hitting third in right field, Cash is the cleanup man at first, Willie Horton hitting fifth in left field, Northrop's in center field batting sixth, Freehand is catching hitting seventh, Wirt is at third base batting eighth, and McLean will be pitching and batting ninth for the Tigers. And of course, after 23 frustrating years, the Tigers are back in the World Series. Their team this year won the most games of any Tiger team in history during a regular season. They're ready, and now we'll have the starting lineup. And now of for the St. Louis Cardinals. Cardinals, manager Red Shandine. <laughs> Batting first and playing left field, number 20, Lou Brock. Batting second and playing center field, number 21, Kurt Flood. Batting third and playing right field, number nine, Roger Maris. Batting fourth and playing first base, number 30, Orlando Cepeda. Batting fifth and catching, Number 15, Tim McCarver. Batting sixth and playing third base, number 18, Mike Shannon. Batting seventh and playing second base, number 25, Julian Javier. Batting eighth and playing shortstop, number 27, Dal Maxville. Batting ninth and pitching, number 45, Bob Gibson. Now the remaining members of the Cardinal squad being introduced and their coaches and 
Of course, the Cardinals breezing into another pennant, defending their world championship here today. Lou Brock leading off in left. Kurt Floods in center, batting number two. Maris is in right field. The Paytas, the cleanup man, playing first base. A Carver catching, hitting fifth. Mike Shannon at third base, batting sixth. Javier is a second baseman, batting seventh. Max Villa, shortstop, batting eighth. And Gibson is pitching and batting ninth. We had a light rain here in St. Louis this morning. The sun came out about 10 o'clock. And it's turned into a muggy, hot afternoon. We have a fairly stiff breeze blowing right now from first base to third base. In other words, balls hit in the air toward left field are going to be given a boost today. So the breeze could be a factor. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and join in the singing of our national anthem which will be played by Dick Renner and his band and will be sung by Gerald Hutton, who was a teacher in the St. Louis Public School. Oh, see, can you see by the The first game of the 1968 World Series is being brought to you from St. Louis as the Detroit Tigers meet the St. Louis Cardinals. Yes, sir. Up Periscope. Up Periscope. Bearing. 150. Ship ahoy. You've got Dodge Fever. Man that Monaco. Design 69. Take a long, slow look. Luxury line of comfort on a 122-inch wheelbase to give you a big car ride at a popular price. Under the hood, there's engine room for up to 440 cubic inches. New Superlight makes night driving super safe. Concealed windshield wipers keep the lines clean as a clipper ship. Inside, you're in command in first-class comfort. Dodge Fever at your Dodge dealer. Today's first game, Tom Gorman is at the National League behind the plate, Jim Hunachek of the American League at first base, Stan Landis of the National League at second base, Bill Kinnaman of the American League at third base, Doug Harvey of the National League down the left field line, and Bill Haller of the American League down the right field line. We pause briefly for station identification. <laughs> Harry Carey at Bush Memorial Stadium. Mary Ann Peacock is throwing out the first ball. She's held by Jim Hickok there. She's the United Poster Girl. Photographers, of course, recording that event. The governor of the state of Missouri is uh, directly behind, behind her. There she is, Mary Ann Peacock. There's the commissioner of baseball, William Eckert, and Gussie Bush, the president of the St. Louis Cardinals. 
right next to the commissioner of baseball. So the scene is set, and a little tension now builds up around this beautiful ballpark. The first game of the 1968 World Series is about to start. And in any World Series, the first game is important, but perhaps never quite as important as this year. There go the Cardinals onto the field. And walking slowly to the mound, Bob Gibson, who set a new National League record for earned run average this year, 1.12. And now to bring you the play-by-play -play on this, the first game of the World Series, NBC's great voice of sports, Kurt Gowdy. Thank you, Harry. Bob Gibson, who if he wins today, would become the first National League pitcher to ever win six World Series games. Jack Coombs. 1-5, Free Finger Brown, 1-5, Christy Mathewson, the five-game winner in the World Series. The Major League record for most series victories belongs to Whitey Ford, who won 10. Gibson has won five World Series games in a row, two in 64 and three last year. So he's shooting for several records today. And facing him from Avon, Connecticut, Dick McCollum who led all the Major League second basemen and homers this year with 16. He has good power for an infielder. He's averaged 15 homers in his last five years. McAuliffe, Stanley, and Kaline. McAuliffe wound the season up hitting 249. They're playing him a couple of strides toward right. And the first pitch of the World Series is the ball. McAuliffe has probably the oddest stance. He looks uncomfortable at the plate of any of the batters that you'll see in the World Series. Notice how he holds his bat. The strike one and one now. He's a slasher. Very aggressive at the plate. And he hits line drives to all fields. A one one pitch. Ball two. Two and one to Dick McAuliffe. The 2 1 pitch. Pop foul over toward the seat and drifting out of play. That's the Tiger dugout, third base way, and the Cardinals are at first. Bob Gibson will be 33 years old in November, born and lives in Omaha, Nebraska. Gave him a day there last year after the 67 World Series. Former basketball player with the Harlem Globetrotters. A tremendous all-around athlete. The 2-2 pitch to McCullough. He struck him out. And Gibson gets his first man. And aside from McLean and Gibson right now, here's the boy that's the talk of the series, Mickey Stanley. The best defensive center fielder in the American League who is going to be a shortstop today. Well, uh, Harry, I think you could really call this the Gibson lineup for the Tigers. They're trying to get an extra bat in there against Gibson. He's hard to score on. They figure by moving Stanley to the infield, K-line and right, they'll have a little bit better batting lineup. And it's really a Bob Gibson lineup. They try to get as much hitting as possible against him. That's the breaking pitch of Gibson. One ball, one strike. One of the really audacious moves of World Series history, and Mayo Smith deserves a lot of credit. It takes courage to make a move like that going into a World Series. And of course, it's put a lot of pressure on this fellow, Mickey Stanley. Two and one. Mickey Stanley was born in Grand Rapids. He lives in Birmingham, Michigan. He's a fellow that has improved himself. Year by year, at the plate, he's always been a good defensive player. Swinging at a bad pitch, two and two. He's 
change his stance several times. He'll hit behind the runners. He'll go to the opposite field. And he's hit a respectable 259 this year. The 2 2 pitch to Stanley. Fastball is foul out of play. Gibson poured that one in there. That's his quickest pitch of the game. One factor that Gibson and McLean have in common tremendous competitors on that mound. They refuse to give in to the hitter. The 2 2 pitch. Just a little bit low. Three and two now. Boy, oh, that's a great shot right there, Kurt, isn't it? They can see it all from there. Full count for Mickey Stanley. One out, nobody on. There's a line drive in a left field in front of Brock. There's the first base into the series. Stanley's on. And Al Kaline, who has been an outstanding performer with the Tigers for 16 years, has always had the dream of playing in a World Series and realizes his goal right now as he steps in. Kaline injured several times this year out of months with a fractured bone in his arm. There goes the runner. The throw down, and Stanley is out the air. Just watch the play again in slow motion. McCarver got the ball away mighty fast. There's Javier. Now watch the tag. Beautifully done. Now the Tigers are starting a center fielder, a shortstop. They run the first time they get a man on. One and one. Curtis the throws. They're not playing a scared hand. They're aggressive. K-Line still wound up as the leading hitter of the Tigers this year, batting 287. They're deep in a step or two toward left for him. And the 1-1 one -one pitch. Foul back. One ball, two strikes to K-Line. Two down, nobody on. First inning, no score. A 1-2 pitch. High slider, two and two. K-line hit 368 from the middle of August until the windup of the season. Come on, Bob. This boy never played a day in the minor league. Born in Baltimore. The two-two pitch. Struck him out on a hit curveball. Well, Gibson has him out of there in the top of the first. No runs, one hit. There were no errors and nobody left. Middle of the first inning. The score. The Tigers nothing, the Cardinals are coming to bat. In this remote part of Canada, people depend on the river. And by river, regularly as clockwork, the Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce brings banking service to them. S.S. Jean Briand is just one of the more than 1,350 commerce branches in this country. It's typical of commerce determination to make your banking convenient. Think how handy your own commerce branch is. Here's why. Because the commerce has more branches than any other bank on this continent. Bank of Commerce, Bank of Commerce. One of the world's great banks. 31-game winner Denny McLean will face Lou Brock. And here's a study of McLean. His delivery. He's compact. He's powerful. He has good control. And here's another look at him. Now, Lou Brock getting a hand. Don Wirtz in on him at third. Shortstop and second baseman have to come in a couple of steps. What a World Series this fella had last year. He opened the series at Fenway Park 
first batter up in the series had a base hit and then stole second on the first pitch to the next batter and that set the pattern for Brock and the Cardinals. He broke the all time World Series record for stolen bases wound up hitting over 400 in the series. He likes to go after the first pitch Kurt. Let's see what he does here in McLean. Ball one McLean fastball pitcher came up with a slider this year uses the change up has that calf always pulled down low over his eyes one and one the Lou Brock and you know Harry he was playing the organ last night at 1130 in the one of the lounges there entertaining some of his teammates he's quite an organ player a better pitcher though he'll argue with you on that a one one pitch Inside, ball two. Two and one to Brock. Brock finished strong this year. He had nagging injuries early in the season. He wound up hitting 279. Led his league with 62 stolen bases. Led the league in triples. Ground ball to short. Mickey Stanley with his first chance. Throws him out. That'll help Stanley. He's got that first one out of the way. You think that the Brock deliberately tried to test him on the very first man up? Kurt Flood. Flood, the most consistent Cardinal batter this year, wound up hitting 301. Five homers, 60 runs batted in. Ball one. McLean is a high ball pitcher. Except when he comes sidearm. And his fastball sinks. But you'll see him up around the letters and the shoulders with his fastball a lot. There's that high one. And the ball sails and takes off. One ball, one strike. Now back, one ball, two strikes to Kurt Flood. No score, last of the first inning. <laughs> Coaching at first for the Cardinals is Dick Sisler, and over at third, Joe Schultz. Flood is being played straight away. He hits to all fields. Now you notice he dropped down a little bit with his delivery that time. That's what he's been doing this year to right-handers. All two strike two to Kirk Flood. The 2-2 pitch is hit foul into the stands down the right field line. Denny McLean's 31 victories, the most by a major league pitcher since 1931. When Lefty Grove won 31 with the Philadelphia Athletics. McLean started with a White Sox in 62. Was picked up by the Tigers on waivers in 1963. Quite a pickup by them. Fly ball to right field. Al Kaline in the shadows in the corner. Two down. And playing his last World Series. He finished his last regular season. He's retiring after this series. Roger Maris getting a big hand from the crowd. They had a day for Roger here on Sunday at the end of the season. He wound up hitting 255 this year with five homers, 45 RBI. Two down, nobody on, no score. It's the breaking pitch to right field. K-line waiting for it. That's it. McLean breezes through the first inning, puts them down one, two, three. And at the end of the first inning, the score, the Tigers nothing and the Cardinals nothing. The all-new Plymouth Fury for 1969. So big, so beautiful, so fresh in design, it's hard to believe this is a popular priced car. Fury has more comfort, more roominess, more luxury, and behind the wheel, more excitement. The 
1969 Plymouth Valiant, built to Chrysler standards of six-passenger roominess and comfort, the Honest Compact. Fury, Valiant, Barracuda, and Belvedere at your Plymouth dealer. This game is authorized under television rights granted by Major League Baseball solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Major League Baseball is prohibited. Norman Cash, Willie Horton, Jim Northrup up for the Tigers in the second. Curveball is over for a strike. Cash is the only Tiger starter with previous World Series experience. He was up four times as a pinch hitter with the White Sox in 1959. Low to him a ball. And this fellow had a great last half of the season. He wound up hitting 263, 25 homers, 63 RBI. Most of his hitting was done in the second half. Foul back. Born in Justiceburg, Texas, lives down in El Dorado, Texas. They're deep and toward right for him, normally a pull hitter to right field. A one-two pitch to Cash. Struck him out in a blazing pass. Third strikeout for Gibson. Gibson has had an outstanding strikeout record in the World Series. Coming into this game, he had struck out 57 men in 54 innings. That's the strikeout an inning, Harry. One out, nobody on. Power man of the Tigers. They have quite a few of them down through that lineup. Willie Horton takes a strike. Horton hit 285, 36 homers, 85 RBI. They're deep and toward left for him. Going around in a fastball, strike two. Horton finished second. And the message from Commissioner Ecker. Hoping that you enjoy the game. And we do too. And the entire series. One out, nobody on, no score, top of the second. Oh, look at that curveball. Uh, he's got a great curve today, Harry. Yes, he has, and it's pretty hard to distinguish between his curveball and his slider, Kurt. That one exploded. A year ago against the Red Sox in the first game of the series, Gibson had struck out four. Watch this ball break. Right over that outside corner. Yes, he's got a good one going. He has now struck out four of the first five batters he's faced. Jim Northrop's up. Northrop takes the fastball. Back one on him. Northrop, born in Breckenridge, Michigan, lives in Detroit. Northrop hitting 264 for the year, 21 homers, 90 RBIs. He has the big hit. Strike two. Bob Gibson had an almost incredible record this year. He didn't win as many games as McLean. But he led the majors in shutouts with 13. Finished with the lowest earned run average in the history of the National League. A ball, one and two. Wally Moses is coaching at first for the Tigers. And Tony Cuccinella is at third. Tigers have two down, nobody on. And he struck out the side, and Gibson has now struck out five of the first six men he's faced. At the end of an inning and a half, it's the Tigers nothing and the Cardinals nothing. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, feel confident. Stay dry with new Right Guard Antiperspirant, a completely new product from Right Guard. Right Guard Antiperspirant is a new defense against perspiration. It contains a tested agent that checks perspiration wetness. Feel confident. Stay dry. Get new Right Guard Antiperspirant in the silver can. Ten more blades to go. 
Five lights to go. Three? Just three blades to go? That's it? I used up all the old blades? Now I can use the new Gillette Super Stainless Steel Blade with the Miracle Plastic Coating on the edge? They say it's supposed to spoil you. The spoiler. Zapata, McCarver, and Shannon will be up for the Cardinals in the last half of the second. That's the commissioner's box. Uh, there's Commissioner Eckert. On uh, his right is Lynn Townsend, the chairman of the board of Chrysler, and Virgil Boyd, the president of the Chrysler Corporation. Mr. and Mrs. William Salatich, president of Gillette Safety Razor Company. Mr. and Mrs. Casey Stengel are there also in the commissioner's box today. Orlando Cepeda. Ball one. Cepeda had a disappointing year with a bat hitting 248, 16 homers, 73 runs batted in. Most valuable player in the National League last year. There's the sidearm delivery that McLean came up with this year. One and one. So Cepeda, who had trouble hitting in last year's World Series, is anxious to atone for 67. The one-one pitch is ball two, two and one. Well, Harry, sports has a way of never coming out the way you think it will, but three things should happen today if these two fellows are right. You could have a low-scoring game. They'll both be around at the finish, and it could be one of the quickest games in World Series history. Foul ball. These two fellows don't mess around out there. They pitch. I'm intrigued by the style of McLean. Uh, you, you mentioned it before, Kurt, about how he throws everything up high. You know, in the National League, pitchers that throw pitches high usually get beat. But he's, uh, he's so effective and he's so strong that he can uh, pitch what is usually a weakness for a pitcher, and he makes a strength out of it. American League fans have some concern that uh, they call high pitches strikes in the American League and not so much in the National League. There's a National League umpire behind the plate, Tom Gorman. The 2-2 delivery to Cepeda fouls the back. Watch the Peta when he swings, he strides in, he walks right into that pitch. He has good power to all fields. He can hit the ball a long ways to right center. And he should like Tiger Stadium. This park puts more stress on defense and pitching. Here's the 2-2 delivery. Foul into the stand. Talk Harry about McLean being strong. He led the American League in complete games. And he led the majors in innings pitch this year. He's been a real workhorse. The 2-2 pitch. Foul back. He works with three days rest. Gibson works with four days rest. Of course, Gibson now is eight years older. But McLean likes only three days rest all year. Could you say that Gibson is a young 32 and McLean in pitching savvy, knowledge, and ability is an old 24? I think that would be an after strip. Nobody on, nobody out. The 2-2 pitch. He went out there, a wide breaking pitch, popped it up in the shallow center. There's Northrop in under it for the out. The Pater was reaching for that one. A good change of pace that time. He really had him fooled, Curt. He was way out in front. It's, uh, the fans could tell if they were watching. That's Tim McCarver, batting 253 for the year, five homers foot, 48 RPI height. McCarver fell off along with uh, Cepeda in batting. And he also had trouble in last year's World Series uh, hitting. There's a drive in the right center. That one may be in the gap. It's all the way out to the fence. McCarver is coming for three. Here's the throw wide. He's in there with a triple. Gets away, but backed up by McLean. McCarver triples the right center. 
He's on third now with one out. And the Cardinals have the first scoring opportunity. Mike Shannon, a clutch hitter this year for the Cardinals. He has 266, knocked in 79 runs with 15 homers. He's the only St. Louis born player here on the Cardinal roster. The Tigers are bringing the infield in. The outfield's deep. Step or two toward left. McCarver on third, one out. McCarver runs well, too, for a catcher. Probably the fastest catcher in baseball. A ball, one to nothing. One nothing pitch. Lays off of it. That was a tough pitch to lay off, too. Two to nothing. Lane is behind Shannon, two and nothing. McCarver third, one out. No score, last of the second. Hit sharply fouled down the third baseline. Two and one to Shannon. Ready now for the 2 1 pitch. Foul back. 2 and 2. Plane asked for a new ball. I wonder how he could see his signal the way he tucked that cap down over his eyes, Harry. Well, that's those contact lenses, I guess. He has one white and one tennis contact lens, too. Yeah, you mentioned McCarver's speed for a catcher, which is so true. Two years ago, he had 13 triples. Quite odd for a catcher to have that many triples. Two and two to Shannon. A runner on third, one out. The Cardinals threatening here in the second. Struck him out with a fastball. So a neat recovery by McLean, who had dropped behind him 2-0 and oh, and then struck him out. And now with two down, the Tigers back the infield up. And Julio Javier is coming up. This first game of the 1968 series is being brought to you live and in color exclusively on NBC, where more people watch sports than on any other network. Javier hitting 260 for the year. Four homers, 52 runs batted in. He had a fine series against the Red Sox last year. He had 360 in last year's seven-game series. Kurt, here's a high fastball hitter right here, Javier. He's down low, one to nothing. These two clubs have a book on each other. Pages and pages of scouting reports. Two down, McCarver at third. Nothing to nothing, last of the second. A little bit high. From McLean, got behind Shannon, two and nothing. Now he's behind Javier, two and nothing. You see that pitcher getting behind batters early. You wonder if he's going to have his great day. Here's the 2-0 pitch. Right back in with a fastball for a strike. Two and one.
McLean pitched well on the road. He won 17 and lost only two away from Tiger Stadium this past year. The 2 1 pitch. And then on top of him, 3 and 1 now. Gibson had a 3 and 2 count on Stanley in the first inning. McLean now is 3 and 1 to Javier. Tim McCarver at third, two down. Three one delivery. Foul back. Three and two. If you've joined us late, one hits, uh, hit for each club. Stanley single in the first for the Tigers, and McCarver has tripled here in the last of the second for the Cardinals. Javier from the Dominican Republic started his big league career with a fire. McLean pitching three and two. Right in there for strike three. So McLean strikes out Shannon and Javier with a runner on third and one out. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left. And at the end of two innings, no score. Oh, I'm so nervous. What if I got Dodge fever right in the middle of cutting this Two million dollar diamond. Some things just can't wait, like the Dodge Dart Swinger 340. Young new compact with a wild new personality. The size, style, and look say it all. Please, I don't want to make a boo-boo. With bumblebee stripes, dual exhaust, four on the floor, and a new high performance hood. What gives the Swinger its sway? 340 cubes of V8. Oh, no. Oh, boy, am I going to get yelled at. Dodge Dart Swinger 340 for 1969. Dodge Fever. More distracting than ever. Dodge is turning up the fever now. Let's go down now in the stands to Tony Kubek. Thank you, Kurt. I'm sitting with the Commissioner of Baseball, General Eckert. General Eckert, looks like a fine World Series, a fine pitching deal. Another great World Series, two uh, great teams, uh, great pitching contests, and I want to thank all of these uh, hundreds of millions of fans that have supported our great game for all these years, and particularly since I've been Commissioner. Commissioner, thank you so much. Now let's get back to live action. Bill Prehan took the first pitch for a ball, leading off here in the third, going after one of Gibson's breaking pitches for a strike, one and one. Freehan hitting 263. At 25 homers, 84 runs batted in. Fastball for a strike. Gibson has struck out five of the first six men. And Harry, this game is proceeding as Bill. Just according to script. A tremendous pitching duel. The one two pitch. Ball two. He didn't commit himself, checked his swing, two and two. I thought it was significant that McLean got his first strikeouts when there was a runner at third and only one out. Two and two to Bill Freehan, a former Michigan football star. Fouls it back. Now Gibson, maybe 32. I can't see where he's lost anything off that fastball, Harry. He's quick. He'll be around a long time, barring an injury. A 2-2 pitch to Freehan. 3-2. Three Gibson a little unhappy with that pitch. Got away from him. I think more a little unhappy with himself, as you said, that the pitch got away from him. He was sort of off balance uh, when he threw the pitch. So this is his second 3-2 count in the game. And here it is to freehand, and it fouls it back. 
Now you see these batters fouling pitches off, swinging late, hitting fouls in the seats to the opposite field. You know both these men have stuff. They just can't get around on them. Nobody on, nobody out. The three two pitch to freehand. High foul, drifting back again. Bob Gibson had the second best shutout total in modern baseball history since 1900 this year. 13 shutouts. The 3 2 pitch. Stroke go. foul down the third baseline. And Kurt, for the first time in his career, and he's very proud of it too, he was the strikeout champ of the league with 268 strikeouts. He continues this pace. He's going to be the strikeout champ of all time in the series. Three and two. Three, two, pitch. Strike three. Brian uh, may not have committed himself, but I believe that pitch was on the outside corner anyway. Get some sharp curve. He has now struck out six of the first seven. The all-time record for most strikeouts in a World Series game, 15, held by Sandy Koufax for the Dodgers in 1963. Gibson has six, and we're only in the third inning. One out, nobody on. Don Word up. Nothing and one to Word, who hit 200 this year, 12 homers, 37 RBIs. Don lives in New Providence, Pennsylvania. That's right too. Right now, Bob Gibson is challenging an all-time World Series record. He has struck out five in a row, and the all-time record is six. If he gets word on uh, a strikeout, he'll tie the all-time World Series record. Oh, didn't miss it by much. One ball, two strikes to work. We have one out, nobody on, no score in the third. Work single in the center field. That's the second hit for the Tigers. And brings up Danny McLean, who's a good bunner, by the way. He led the American League in sacrifice bunts. Had 16 of them during the year. No runs, two hits for the Tigers. No runs, one hit for the Cardinals. One away, word on first. Strike to McLean. Dick McAuliffe on deck at the top of the Tiger batting order. And McLean trying to bunt again, fouls the back. Now it's nothing and two. Look down to Tony Cuccinello third for a sign. He's out. Strike out for the pitcher and a put out for the catcher. Trying to bunt on the third strike. Follows the back. Seven strikeouts for Bob Gibson. Top of the order, Dick McAuliffe, who struck out in the first inning. Kurt, the most strikeouts in one game this year for Gibson was 15, and strangely enough, he lost that game. Two down for the Tigers. Don Ward at first. Curve is over for a strike. Gibson's always been a pressure pitcher, doing his best jobs when it means the most. Today he looks more determined than than ever, Harry. I'll make a comment on that in a moment. The ground ball hit down to Cepeda. Steps on the back for the out. And that's it for the Tigers in the third. No run. One hit. There were no errors and one left. At the end of two and a half innings, it's the Tigers nothing and the Cardinals nothing. Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce. And bought a blue fast bag with buckets. You look great in blue, Jerry.
On the other hand, Wilfred S. Hughes got a commerce red convertible loan and bought a beige sedan. And after you picked me up at the hairdressers, you could, Wilfred, watch out for that truck. Wilfred, it says no left turn. Take me down to Mary Jane's, yeah? Where else sure beats walking, eh, Willie? Meanwhile, Miss Charis B. Holmes got a commerce red convertible loan and bought a pickup truck. How do you like them apples, eh, Charis? Wouldn't you like a commerce red convertible loan? You might even get a red convertible. Whatever you want, from cars to cameras, boats to Broadway. Get it. With a bank plan loan from the Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce, you'll find it easy to arrange. Just talk to the man at the commerce. Tony Kubek. Lou, you got one of the top sports fans in the country, Mr. Frank Sinatra. Frank, who are you picking in the series? I like the Cardinals in about five games, Tony. I think, uh, I think uh, first of all, I think Gibson is pitching so great today. I think he's marvelous. I don't mean this as a pun, but he's really humming. Better than you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Frank, thank you so much. Let's go back upstairs now to Curtin Perry. Now Maxville, leading off in the last of the third for the Cardinals. A ball to him. Maxville had the best average of his career this year, hitting 252. One homer, 24 runs batted in for him. Born in Granite City, Illinois, lives now in St. Louis. McLean is behind two or nothing. Kurt, the, an odd statistic for an eighth place hitter like Val Maxville is the fact that he also led the team in drawing bases on balls. Three and nothing. McLean is struggling just a little here today, right now, with his control. He uh, fell behind both Shannon and Javier in the second, but then came back to get him out. Now he's behind three and nothing to Maxville. And he walked him on four pitches. There's the first walk of the game. Bob Gibson, a 170 batter as a pitcher. He's no out at the plate. A threat up there, good base running, a good fielder in his position. I don't know whether some of these fans are standing up to give Gibson a uh, standing ovation or whether they're just getting up to get a look at Frank Sinatra. But at any rate, a lot of them came to their feet. Maxwell on first. Nobody out, no score, last to the third. Lou Brock will be on deck. The strike to Gibson. Cash was charging from first, word in from third. And McAuliffe going over to cover first and second base. These are the plays now that Mickey Stanley will, won't do out of an automatic reflex action. That's shortstop. Good luck. Lane will have to make the play to McAuliffe at first base. Sacrifice for Gibson. And he's out from McLean the pitcher to McAuliffe the second baseman. In scoring position now is Dell Maxville. One out in the top of the order for the Cardinals. Lou Brock will be up. Brock rounded out his first time. Twenty-nine years old. He has some good years ahead of him. Nothing and nothing, but once again, the Cardinals are threatening. Third baseman Ward is playing shallow again. Rock puts that pressure on the infield. You have to come in against him. Foul back. And when they move in, of course, he can slap that ball through easier. Kurt, I believe about 75% of Brock's hits are towards left field. He sure likes to hit to the opposite field. Willie Horton is shading that left field line. 
No balls and one strike to Brock. Maxwell's at second, one out. Just a little bit inside to him. One and one. Remember, there's a fairly stiff breeze blowing from first toward third today. The temperature is in the 80s, and it's a muggy afternoon here. Bouncer to the mound. They may have a run-up now here. He's out. Coming over to cover is Mickey Stanley. McLean to Stanley for the out on Maxville. Watch the play again. McLean makes the play perfectly. First running towards the man, and then flipping quickly to Stanley. No doubt about his being out, was there? McClain knew what he was doing. As soon as that ball started back to him, Harry. Listen to the crowd. You know what they expect. All right, now this is a story now. Can McClain hold Brock? How about Freehan's arm against Brock? McClain is quick with his feet, guys. Pretty good at holding runners. Crowd yelling, go, go, go. Ball one. I thought he'd go on the first pitch, Kurt. He, uh, he usually does, but he wants to make sure that he can read McLean. He stole 25 bases his last 28 games of the season. Two down, Brock at first. There he goes. The throw. He's in there easily. He'll be up and on his way to third. Oh, Lou Brock, field second. They'll probably charge Freehan with an error on the throw in the center field. The pressure that he puts on the pitcher and the whole defense was obvious right there. Not only that, but he gives his hitter a better opportunity, a man like Flood, because pitchers usually will pitch out, therefore they fall behind Flood, and he can deliver base hits on fat pitches. I think there's something wrong with Brock Harry. They're calling the trainer of the Cardinals out. Looks like his uh, shoulder or his right arm. It could have been worse, his legs, because he's the franchise with those Speedy feet of his. Last year's World Series, he stole seven bases in seven attempts to set an all-time World Series record. He might have hurt himself when he got up at second base after sliding in and starting over to third. Sort of got tangled up. That's uh, Bob Bowman, the trainer of the St. Louis Cardinals, talking to him. And Joe Schultz is the third base coach. And Kurt uh, probably will be announced as the manager of the new Seattle franchise of the American League following the World Series. The Cardinals have two down. Lou Brock at third. The score is nothing, nothing. Last of the third inning, and Kurt floods the battery. Fly to right field his first time. Once again, they play him straight away. The bunt. He'll do that. He'll uh, disguise that bunt to the last second, drop that bat. He's an excellent bunter down the third baseline. Fouls it off. down. McClain watches Brock over at third. We've got a big walking lead. McClain pitches quickly. The change is the rhythm out there. Two and two. This is a good way to bother that base runner. Changing your delivery, the rhythm of it. Here's a 2-2 pitch. Three and two. Plain has thrown quite a few pitches here in his first three innings. 
probably more than normal for him. And remember, it's a hot, muggy day. Two down, Brock at third, the three-two pitch to Kirk Flood. Goes after a high fastball and pops it up. Don Work gives way to Mickey Stanley and back of the mound for the out. And once again, McLean pitches out of trouble with a man in scoring position. No runs, no hits. There was one error, one left at the end of three, no score. Meet the beautiful 1969 GTX, one of the exciting Plymouth Belvedere line that includes Roadrunner and Sports Satellite. GTX is all sport, all luxury and comfort. From any angle, GTX is a great looking performance car at a down to earth price. The sporty Plymouth Barracuda has a look and a personality all its own. A personality you can mold to match your own with a list of options as long as your arm. Fury, Valiant, Barracuda, and Belvedere. Where are you now, Tony Kubek? Harry Carey, I'm right down here with the wife and daughter, Mrs. Bob Gibson and Renee Gibson. Mrs. Gibson, you must be proud of Bob once again. Sure am, as usual. Well, that's good. We'd like to talk to you longer. The game's about to begin. Renee, are you proud of your daddy? Yes, I am. Renee, Mrs. Gibson, thank you. Let's go back upstairs for some baseball action. Now, Maxville leading it off for the Cardinals, bottom of the seventh inning. Three to nothing, St. Louis. Pass ball inside. Pat Dobson, who relieved Denny McLean. Hello. McLean had good stuff today. You can see why he won 31 ball games so far as the stuff, but he's just a little bit wide. I would imagine unfamiliarity with the mound might have had something to do with it. Maxville pops it up. Norm Cash puts it away. Let's see. Listen to the reaction from the crowd as Bob Gibson comes up. Sacrificed in the third, struck out in the fourth. He's a good hitter. Fouled it back. This is the second time in World Series competition that Gibson has fanned 13 men, and this game isn't over yet. He fanned 13 against the Yankees in 1964. Holds the series strikeout record 31 against the Yankees in 1964. This is his seventh game World Series competition. And listen to his strikeout totals 9, 13, 9, 10, 6, 10, and 13 so far today. Top five. On the infield. That's for Cash. Two out. Here's Lou Brock coming out. Gibson is shooting for a record share with Lefty Gomez and Red Ruffing of six consecutive wins in series competition. If he wins this one, He'll move in to that record book with Gomez and Ruffing. If he pitches a complete game, he sets a new record for most consecutive complete games. He wasn't KO'd once during the season, was he, Harry? Not actually KO'd. He went out for a pinch hitter a couple of times. 
but never knocked out by the other ball club. Oh. Rock takes it high. In fact, one of the games that uh, he went out, he had pitched a one hitter but was losing one to nothing in the eighth inning. He pitched 13 shutouts, as Kurt told you earlier. And I believe something like 10 games he was he allowed one run. Little tap, foul. Two strikes in the ball. Two out. Rock's a tough batter for the third baseman. He has to play in shallow and shade the line. And as Harry's been pointing out, he can hit to the opposite field, and sometimes he'll hit those wicked shots down there to that third baseman shallow. That he does. Two strikes on the ball. Rush him by. Pat Thompson, a right-hander, with the relief of Denny McLean. McLean was touched for three runs on two hits and two walks. One air also involved in the fourth inning. All three is low. For St. Louis fans, the action starts when Brock gets on first base. He's where the action is, in other words. 3-2 pitch. center field stands and the Cardinals lead four to nothing and there are the Albertos down there naturally very happy remember the home run he hit at Fenway Park last fall this is about the same type that ball was hit well over 400 feet Harry that's a third home run he's hit in series play well Brock has had a home run the only one of the day he has stolen the base. And the Cardinals now lead four to nothing. Here's Flood Hippus. Smash, base hit. Flood singles to center. The Cardinals now have five hits. Roger Maris getting a big hand. You know, this is one of the great stories of sports. How a fellow so unpopular with fans while a member of the Yankees changes uniform and becomes the toast of the town in St. Louis. And that's what's happened to Roger Maris. They love him here. Blood, a good runner himself. Cardinals have tried to steal three times, succeeded twice, so they've been running on the Tigers. Curveball in there, a beauty of strike call. Dobson changing speed with his curveball. Roger Maris. He wants to go out in a blaze of glory. He ends the season, his the career this year. Roger's 34 years old. He could play a few more seasons. He's anxious to move to his new home at Gainesville, Florida. There goes Flood. Hey, for stolen base. Just see the good break he got off first base, and he beats the throw easily. 
There's that other angle now. That flood with his first step was going at full speed. Well, the Cardinals have a man in scoring position. They have stolen three bases. They fail once, and that one time, close enough to precipitate a mild discussion. But they've been running. Two strikes and a ball. Pop foul back. Out of play. You know, uh, I don't know. I guess it's, no, it's all right to mention this, that uh, talking with some of the Cardinals, they uh, undoubtedly from scouting reports freely discussed the fact that according to information they had that they didn't think the Detroit pitchers held runners too closely at first base and that if they got on base, they felt that they would steal a lot of bases. Well, they have. Outside. Two and two. Maris's 16th year as a professional 12 of them in the major league. His home originally, Fargo, North Dakota. Famous for his home runs, but always been underrated as an outfielder, Harry. And very seldom makes a mistake defensively. Ball well, three almost threw it away. Three and two now. Yeah, he's been the complete ball player. Good runner, good, great arm. Fine fielder, power hitter. And at age 34, he's racking them up. Had a great World Series last season. Three balls, two strikes on Maris. So pay the next. Pop set up, he fooled him on a slider. McAuliffe under the ball. That's all for the Cardinals in the seventh. One run, two hits, no errors, one left. At the end of seven full innings, St. Louis four, Detroit nothing. Hello, you technical masterpiece, you. This time people are going to see what goes on inside a 69 Plymouth Fury, not just how beautiful you are. All the time we engineers spend giving you more room inside. And this gorgeous unitized body. Mm. Oh, sure it's gorgeous because we give it a seven-step dip and spray anti-rust treatment. And who's going to tell about the big brakes if I don't? And an enormous trunk. And the magnificent chrome steel torsion bars. We just have been beauty. We pause now for station identification. This is the CBC Television Network. With Kurt Gowdy and Tony Kubek, Harry Carey at Bush Memorial Stadium. We're in the top of the eighth inning. A pinch hitter up there, Eddie Matthews, 37-year-old veteran, appearing in his third World Series, his first as an American leaguer. On the disabled list, much of this year, the count on him, two strikes and the ball. He struck him out, swinging. That is number 14, Eddie Matthews, batting for Don Work. One down, swinging. Harry, here's a man who was almost incredible this year as a pinch hitter, Gates Brown. Where do you read that average off of the pinch hitter? 462 as a pinch hitter with 18 hits, nine of them for extra bases. Gates Brown, a left-handed batter, pinch hitting here. Cardinals leading four to nothing. The next strikeout, if he gets one for Gibson, will tie the World Series record for strikeouts in a game. 
It's a little low. Four to nothing, St. Louis. Bob Gibson doing it again. A little low, ball two. Gates Brown from Crestline, Ohio, originally. That's where he was born. Swings, pop fly, short left. Brock will get it. Two gone. And here's Dick McCollin. You know, Kurt, in order for Gibson to either tie or break that World Series strikeout mark, he will really have to earn it because the heart of the batting order still will come up. We have McAuliffe now with two out of the eighth. Stanley, Kaline, and Cash are sure to bat in the ninth. I remember when Carl Erskine fanned 14 in a World Series against the Yankees while he was a member of the Brooklyn Dodgers. That held up as the record until Sandy Koufax broke it. Foul back. You've watched this man so many times, but one word I think really described him, a machine. He is really a machine on that mound. He's as tough right now as he was in the first or second inning. He's the most intense competitor I ever saw. One ball, one strike. Bob Gibson. Line foul, strike two. Don McMahon is warming up. Gates Brown batted for Pat Dobson, slide out to Brock. Eddie Matthews started the inning as a pinch hitter for work, struck out. And now McCullough with a count of two strikes and a ball. Watch this pitch. It could be a historic one. Fly ball left field. That's all. One, two, three. Nothing across as McCall applied to Brock. At the end of seven and a half innings, it remains the Cardinals four. Detroit, nothing. This is the new Gillette Techmatic Razor. If you think it looks like the old Gillette Techmatic Razor, you're right. The only difference is this little gadget on the cartridge. Now it's set for light beards like mine. But turn it, and you get a slightly closer shave for slightly heavier beards like mine. Turn it again, and you get an average shave for average beards. The same shave you got from the old Techmatic. Now turn it again, and I can get a good close shave. Another turn. And even with a stubble like mine, you'll get as close a shave as you can get from any other razor. Plus all the things you can't get from any other razor. The lever to change edges, the razor band for less nicks, the light feel, the new... Adjustable. Gillette. Pragmatic. The almost perfect razor. Made perfect. And now our man around the ballpark, Tony Kubek. Thank you, Harry. Down here by the Tigers dugout with Mr. Joe Cronin, president of the American League. Joe, it looks like another fine series. Well, between Gibson's great pitching and the base on balls, why the dear old Cardinals are ahead, Tony. But uh, still a long series. We get them tomorrow. If we don't get a few runs before it's over, it's not over yet. Joe, where'd you get that nice-looking NBC cap from? Is it helping you out? Through the courtesy of NBC, many millions of fans are watching this game. Joe, you've seen, of course, this Tiger ball club many times during the course of the year. They've been the type of ball club, haven't they, that bounces back? Oh, yes, they got a good sound ball club, Tony, but uh, Gibson's great today. He's, he's real fast, got good breaking stuff, and you have to give Gibson all the credit in the world. What about your other impressions? Aside from Gibson, what about the rest of this Cardinal ball club? Brock loved the whole bunch. Well, Brock's a great ball player, and two line drives at Maxwell might have turned the game around, too, Tony, as you know. Those balls were well hit as Maxwell caught at shortstop. They were the two feeling plays of the game. Joe Cronin, thank you so much. Now let's go back upstairs to Curt and Harry. Harry, Joe Cronin talked about Bob Gibson's breaking pitch. I think that's been uh, the key to Gibson today. Uh, we all know what a fastball he's got, but he really has had a curveball and has been getting it over. How well would you say he's pitched today with his curve compared to regular season games? His last start, uh, he, he had a great curveball. He said the best curveball he had had all year, and apparently it has stuck with him for the first game of the World Series. 
you know, he's a very proud man, this Gibson uh, Kurt, and uh, if it was to be a contest between the two greatest pitchers in the game, and that's what it is, was billed and is, Gibson was going to win because uh, he just thinks he's the greatest. And certainly he has lived up to that. Cepeda, strike called, Don McMahon, 38 year old veteran, years of experience in the National League with Milwaukee, Houston, then in the American League with Cleveland, the Red Sox, White Sox, and now with the Detroit Tigers, for whom he did some fine work during the season. He won five, lost two. Great earned run average. Right hander delivers in the top. Two balls and a strike, so pay to the hitter. He's nothing out of three. Hit one ball very hard that Horton grabbed in the fifth. Popped up. Bill Freehan has it. Dick Krasuski is now playing third base as a result of work having been pinched at four. One defensive feature the fans might watch for in this series, Norm Cash and Bill Freehan going for foul ball. They're both outstanding. Handling foul. Here's McCarver. He tripled for the first Cardinal hit in the second. Nothing happened as a result. McLean came right back to fan the next two men. He walked in the fourth and scored. Popped up in the sixth. McCarver the batter. Don McMahon throws low and inside. McLean pitched the first five innings. Then Pat Dobson went the next two for the Tigers. The foul ball back. The count is even at a ball and a strike. Four to nothing, St. Louis. I saw a. Uh, Frank Blair this morning, and I believe he gave a computerized final score of five to two. The machine has missed it so far. It's four to nothing. He had it Cardinals five to two on the Today Show. They still have the ninth inning. Two balls and a strike. McCarver the bat. The big first game of the World Series. Riles against Lolik tomorrow. Then a day off, and then Saturday it starts in Detroit. It's high, ball three. Dobson, during his two innings, allowed two hits, one run, a homer by Lou Brock. He didn't strike anybody, walked one. Bouncing ball, cash. Pitcher McMahon will cover. He's out. Here's Mike Shannon, who started the scoring for the Redbirds. Back in the fourth. I've mentioned our demon statistician, Alan Roth, and Shore and Begora, our production manager, comes in for a bow, Jim O'Gorman. Like Gorman isn't Irish enough, he ought to put an O. Shannon fouls it. Two men are out, nobody on base. McLean, Dobson, and now McMahon for the Tigers. Brown ball, that's through there. Base hit. So Shannon has become the first man today to get two hits. Here's Javier. He was out on strikes in the second, singled in two runs in the fourth, smashing one in the right field to score McCarver and Shannon. Then walked and was out stealing in the sixth. The 
The Cardinals are tough in World Series competition. Ground ball, that's through there. Base hit. So Shannon has become the first man today to get two hits. Here's Javier. He was out on strikes in the second, singled in two runs in the fourth, smashing one in the right field to score McCarver and Shannon, then walked and was out stealing in the sixth. The Cardinals are tough in World Series competition. One ball, no strikes. They've won more uh, World Series than any major league team with the exception of the Yankees. Cardinals have won eight out of the 11 they've participated in, including the last four they've played in. One ball, one strike as a result of the foul tip. A runner at first base, two men are gone, bottom half of the eighth inning. The Tigers come down to the ninth with the heart of the batting order, Mickey Stanley, Al Kaline, and Norm Cash. Gibson is shooting at a couple of records as he goes into the ninth inning. I wonder if he's aware of it down there in the dugout. Now, Tony, you've done such a great job all day long. Let's see you get in the dugout. Tell him. Here's a pitch, high fly ball into center field. It'll be caught. Northrop squeezes it. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left. At the end of eight, St. Louis forward, Detroit, nothing. 69 Dodge and Fargo trucks are sport trucks. Here, take a look. New cushion beam suspension. Chrysler took the elastic off the bankroll to completely re-engineer the suspension and steering on Dodge and Fargo pickup trucks. A sway bar was added, springs redesigned, liners added, and a lot more to make 69 Dodge and Fargo trucks the sweetest handling pickups on the road under any load bar none. Bumps flatten, potholes smooth out, rides like a limousine. And that's not all. Handsome new long line styling and comfortable luxury interiors prove you don't have to be ugly to be tough. Dodge and Fargo with cushion beam suspension. Sport Track 69. See your Chrysler dealer for Sport Track 69. Now a line drive to Tony Kubek. Thank you, Harry Carey. We're sitting with the president and owner of the Detroit Tigers, Mr. John Fetzer. Mr. Fetzer, can the Tigers bounce back? Well, uh, we've been coming from behind all year, and we're just hoping that uh, we might show a little that spark right here this afternoon. If we can't, we're going to forget it and start all over tomorrow. Thank you, Mr. Spencer. Let's get back to live action. All right. Mickey Stanley on the first pitch was trying to stop his swing, and bounces went foul on the first baseline. One strike and no ball. Gibson can tie the record for consecutive wins in the World Series. He can set a new World Series record for six complete games in a row. He can tie or break the strikeout record for a World Series game in this ninth inning. Her ball is low. One ball, one strike. Stanley's had one of the four hits. A first inning single. He has had one of the 14 strikeouts in the sixth. You notice how Gibson really comes off that back foot. He really lets everything go. Two balls and a strike. Mickey Stanley fouls back. Two balls, two strikes. Watch this pitch. It could be a record pitch coming up. Harry also, uh, Bob Gibson, if he holds on to this lead, can become the first National League pitcher to ever win six World Series games. 
It could be a productive afternoon. He looks oblivious to it all. Here it is. Wow, out of play. The crowd here knows the strike and what he's shooting at. Every time the count gets the two strikes, they start to stir through the stands. They know he's one strike out of way from tying the record. One from tying and two from breaking it. Two, two pitch. Foul back. <laughs> Every time any kind of contact was, is made with a ball by the hitter, the, the crowd groans. Just as soon as the bat kicks the ball, the groan is audible. It can also be heard. Foul again. Luke Cusser, I think you're right. It's the transistor radios in the crowd that have informed them as they're getting the NBC radio report. Two two pitch. Right up this way. Two balls, two strikes. So he still has a shot at that strikeout. Mickey Stanley. A lot of time on this one. Base hit. A single to center for Stanley. He hit a slider about belt high. Well, the Tigers are four runs behind. But this is a plucky ball club all year long. The ninth inning was the one that they turned ball games around in. K-Line is fanned twice. He also doubled to set up the only scoring chance the Tigers had. Boom, he had a cut. Good fastball. I don't believe Gibson has changed up on a single pitch. It's all fastball, slider, and curve. That low fastball of his has really been sinking, too. <laughs> now what, Harry? Curveball? I think he'll go with the mustard. Let's see. Two strikes, no ball. Stanley at first. Cepeda not holding him on. Miss outside with his fastball. Norm Cash would be next. Al Kaline, who has waited 16 years to play in a World Series game. Fouls it out of play off to the right. Two strikes and a ball. Isn't it a funny game? With all the suspense now, just on an inconsequential thing like a strikeout. All over the world, people, I'm sure, are tensed as they are here at the ballpark for this pitch. Foul back over our heads. He may be showing just a little sign of tiring on a hot, muggy day, Kurt. You notice that little deep breath he took, or like a sigh? Notice he hasn't been coming as smooth as in his delivery, uh, as in his stride as he was earlier. Two strikes and a ball. The pitch to K-Line. Got him! Listen to the crowd! Standing, standing ovation for Bob Gibson. He has just tied a World Series record. now one ball no strikes the record was held by Sandy Kopach 
NBC's game of the week crew, by the way. Oh, the miss! He wants to establish a new record now, and he needs one strikeout with two men to go. He's been consistent. He struck out at least one man in every inning. dramatic scene that I find myself not wanting to say a word because your picture is telling you the whole story. Out of play. We we'll still have a shot at him. Two strikes and a ball. Right now the fans are concentrating more on Gibson's strikeout than the outcome of the game here. I think that's been true for a couple of innings. Cash is fanned twice. K-Line struck out three times, by the way. Listen to him as he gets ready for this pitch. Foul out of play. Two strikes and a ball. Wasn't a dizzy Dean in the World Series against the Tigers in 34 that yelled to his catcher to drop a pop foul so that he could strike Hank Greenberg out a fourth time? I think it was. How the all, just barely had a rather weak swing. There's a lot of hard feelings in that uh, 34 series, and Dean especially has been on Greenberg during the series, and there's been a lot of dugout barbs thrown back and forth. Two strikes and a ball. Ooh, we almost chased it, two and two. Willie Horton will be next. He needs a strikeout for a new record. Al Kaline, great star, playing his first World Series in 16 years, was his 15th strikeout. <laughs> Once again, a standing ovation, a new World Series record. pick up records today like a vacuum cleaner, Harry. <laughs> One ball, no strikes. High pop foul back. He got two strikeouts in the first, three in the second, two in the third, one in the fourth, one in the fifth, two in the sixth, two in the seventh, one in the eighth, two so far in the ninth. What a remarkable performance. One ball, one strike. Foul back. Strike two. And he could end it all now with the most dramatic of flourishes. Two strikes and a ball. Biggest crowd ever to see a baseball game here. Watching baseball World Series history being made. And so are you, wherever you are. Two strikes and a ball. Look at that concentration on his face. Almost chased it. A breaking ball. Willie Horton stopped in time. Just think, he's accounted for 16 of the putouts. All by himself. He got it! Struck him out! Look at the scene on the field. McCarver, the first 
one. Now his infielders all over him. A new world's record of 17 strikeouts in one game. Tony Kubek, I know, will be talking to him. The St. Louis Cardinals have won the first game of the World Series four to nothing. Four runs, six hits, no errors for the Redbirds. No runs, five hits, three errors for the Detroit Tigers. Bob Gibson, the winner. This bank began the year Canada began and grew along with Canada. All along the way, wherever history was being made, the commerce was there. Reliable, progressive, a real working bank. Serving the loggers, the miners, the oil men. For example, the Commerce Oil Map in Calgary maintains an up-to-the-minute picture of who's drilling where, what's good, what's promising, an important service to customers at Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce. Bank of Commerce, Bank of Commerce. One of the world's great banks. And right now, let's get quickly down to Tony Kubek and his guest, Bob Gibson. Thank you very much, Kurt. Bob Gibson in your new book, From Ghetto to Glory. Right now, probably one of your most glorious moments. World Series records all over the place. Congratulations. Thanks a lot, uh, boy. Uh, just great. What about your impressions, Bob, of the Tigers? You just pitched a fantastic ball game again. What about the Tigers? Well, uh, the Tigers, is quite, they're quite a bit like I, I imagined they would be with, with guys that are capable of hitting home runs. Uh, I knew they would be swinging a lot, so uh, I just had to make good pitches. Bob, what about the pitch you used most successfully? Was it the fastball, the curveball, the slider? Which was your best pitch, or were they all good? Well, today, uh, fortunately, uh, every one of my pitches was, uh, were working for me. My fastball was good. I, I was getting it on the corner. Uh, my slider I was getting on the corner, and, and I think my curveball was more of a surprise to them than anything else. So uh, I think that's where the scouting reports help. I don't Bob, think they uh, said too much about my curveball. Bob, you struck out 17, setting a new World Series record. It's fantastic. I mean... The fans just stood and cheered you. That must be your most thrilling moment in sports. You've had many. Well, I, I guess so. I didn't know what they were cheering about, and uh, Tim came out in front of the plate, and I just turned around and looked at the scoreboard. I, uh, I had no idea. Bob, during the course of the game, we had a chance to talk to your lovely wife, Mrs. Gibson, your daughter, Renee, and we saw your mother there up there. Your daughter, Renee, was just enthralled. She was almost in tears seeing her daddy out there perform. She's really proud of you. That's right. She, uh, she was real excited about getting out of school and coming down here. She's just going to be here for the one game today, and then uh, tonight she's going back home, and... And uh, I knew that she, uh, she would enjoy the game, win, lose, or draw. Bob Gibson, congratulations once again. Thank you so much. It's a masterful performance once again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bob Gibson. Now let's go back upstairs. Again, the final score, the Cardinals four, the Tigers nothing. In a moment, we'll continue to review the action of today's game. Wider, completely redesigned from rubber to roof line. Belvedere, our mid-size success car. 26 models, 18 colors, 76 interiors. Valiant, the compact that didn't get bigger, just better. Barracuda, four great engines, three great bodies, and torsion bar suspension for true sports car handling. See what Plymouth's up to now at your Plymouth dealers. Just look what Plymouth's up to now. Once again to the field, and Tony Kubek. Thank you, Kurt. Lou Brock, another one of the stars for the Cardinals. Last year's World Series again this. Lou, a fine ball game. Thank you, Tony. Let me ask you something about your injury. You went off the field. In fact, your trainer came out to talk to you. Anything serious? What specifically is it? Well, Tony, actually, I jammed his shoulder going into uh, second base, and, of course, uh, right then and there, one of those type plays that uh, flashed me through the body. Uh, one of the, it just stunned you for a second, and, of course, uh, I couldn't lift the arm for a split second, and I ran to third base, and, of course, I tried to lift it in, 
I find I couldn't, so I need a few moments so we get back to well, get the shoulder back in place. Well, it's nothing serious, really, that will keep you out of the next World Series game. Well, I hope not. It, it, it's hard to tell until tonight, and of course I hope not. And uh, when I was training, I hope that uh, I'll be able to come back tomorrow. Lou, let's ask your impressions of the Tigers, of course, and let's uh, your, have your impressions of Denny McLean. What about McLean? How do you look to you? Well, then, uh, actually, Denny McLean t- today was somewhat wild, Tony, and of course he couldn't get his pitches down. He had good stuff, but he was just wild and high, and he couldn't get it down. And, and of course, we decided to take, and we did, and of course, uh, we got a couple of hits in between, and uh, I think that's the ball game. What about the rest of the Tigers? You talked about McLean. What about them as a team? Do they impress you in any way whatsoever? They most certainly do. Uh, they come out there swinging at bat. Of course, when you got a guy like Gibson pitching, he's often tough uh, for any ball club, that is. Uh, uh, any day that Gibson is right, he's going to be tough to beat. And, of course, uh, they battled Gibson all the way, and I'm sure that uh, they've come out again tomorrow swinging. Lou Brock, thank you so much. We appreciate you coming on. Hope you have another successful series. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Lou Brock. Now back upstairs. Again, the final score. The Cardinals four, the Tigers nothing. In a moment, we'll continue to review the action of today's game. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, feel confident. Stay dry with new Right Guard Antiperspirant, a completely new product from Right Guard. Right Guard Antiperspirant is a new defense against perspiration. It contains a tested agent that checks perspiration wetness. Feel confident. Stay dry. Get new Right Guard Antiperspirant in the silver can. Ten more blades to go. Five blades to go? Three. Just three blades to go? That's it? They used up all the old blades? Now I can use the new Gillette Super Stainless Steel Blade with the Miracle Plastic Coating on the edge? They say it's supposed to spoil you. The spoiler. To pitch six consecutive complete game victories in the World Series. He's the first National League pitcher to win six World Series games. And of course set an all-time World Series strikeout record with his 17 strikeouts. Three pretty tough hitters he got out of the ninth inning. K-Line, Cash, and Horton, Harry Carey. Uh, as, as we indicated before, in order for him to get the record, he was really going to have to earn it, and he did. And uh, he just wanted to prove he's the greatest pitcher alive, and he may have done that here today, Kurt, I'll tell you. 14 shutouts this year, 13 in the regular season. The fellow seems to be at his best with the biggest pressure on him. You remember we were talking about his curveball today, and uh, I noticed he said to Tony Kubek that uh, his curveball was better today, and apparently the scouting reports had encouraged him to throw more curves. In his last outing during the regular season, he was impressed with the fact that his curveball had improved so much. And uh, if he's added another great pitch to what he already had, how are you ever going to beat him? Well, tomorrow it's going to be a right-hander, 19-game winner, Nelson Bryles. Mickey Lolick, a 17-game winner. And watch out for Lolick. He can be a real sleeper, Harry. He finished the season uh, very strongly, just as he did last year. He's a left-hander that uh, may give the Cardinals a lot of trouble. Now, we'll be back with more about the 1968 World Series and a look at tomorrow's second game. In Canada, there are some 20 million people. These 20 million people have come from more than 150 different countries and represent 40 ethnic groups and over 20 different religious denominations. So Canadians represent most of the colors, creeds, and races on Earth. Different features, different sizes, different customs, different languages. And as for brains or ability, no one race has a monopoly on these. Higher on the basis of merit. Mexico around the world. Bob Gibson was a story, pitching the shutout, setting World Series records, his big one, an all-time World Series record for most strikeouts in a game, 17. So the Cardinals jump off 
win the opener 4 nothing tomorrow a right-hander Bryles against a left-hander Lowley. We hope you enjoyed today's telecast on behalf of Harry Carey and Tony Kubek, Kurt Gowdy saying good afternoon from St. Louis, Missouri. And don't forget to join Jim Simpson, Sandy Kovacs again tomorrow at 1.30 Eastern Time, 12.30 Central for World Series Report to be followed immediately by Game 2 of baseball's annual classic, the World Series. The first game of this 1968 World Series has been brought to you by Gillette, makers of new right guard antiperspirant in the silver can. By the more than 1,350 branches of the Canada Imperial Bank of Commerce. And by Chrysler Canada Limited and the Dodge, Plymouth, Roots, and Simca dealers who sell the quality engineered cars and trucks by Chrysler. the second game between the St. Louis Cardinals and Detroit Tigers in the 1968 World Series. And now for the remainder of our time period, an adventure film on dragsters. Somewhere, something went wrong. The car didn't live up to its expectations. But they'll find the trouble and meet the competition, which never eases up either. Some adjustments and Craig will be out there again. To Craig Breedlove is just another momentary setback.